The Colorado Rockies have signed Chris Bryant. What? Yeah, I'm going to keep it real with you guys. This signing makes absolutely no sense in the world to me. And we're going to break it down piece by piece in just a second because Chris Bryant going to Colorado on a seven-year, plus million dollar deal has sent shockwaves through the baseball community. We are all scratching our heads because it doesn't make sense for Chris Bryant, or maybe it does if you look at it in a few different ways, and it doesn't make sense for, for the Rocky. What the fudge, man? Anyways, before I get too upset, Set. Let's go ahead and talk about a few other smaller signings and trades that happened before we break down the entirety of the Chris Bryant to the Rockies move. Amir Garrett is going to Kansas City, so he is back in the same division as Javier Baez. We both know that this friendship has been very uh, just great, as you guys can see. Look at them. They're hugging, and they're saying they love each other. Yeah, Amir Garrett and Javier Baez, they're back in the same division. One is on the Tigers, and one is on the Royals. The Reds continue their fire sale. They give away one of their better and more promising left-handed relievers in exchange for another lefty, old man Jenkins himself, Mike Miner, who has a four and a half ERA over his last 430-ish innings pitched. So again, I don't understand what the Reds are doing and they should just get rid of Jonathan India and Joey Votto while they can because they're making a mockery of our game and the recent CBA because obviously tanking, it was not de-incentivized. There's still plenty of opportunities to do so and the Reds are proving that Moving on over to a, another deal that the Royals made, Zach Grinke is going back home to where it all started. He gets $13 million for a one-year deal. And if you don't remember, back in the day, Zach Grinke actually won a Cy Young with the Kansas City Royals. And this was at a point where he didn't even really enjoy playing baseball. He was deciding if he wanted to quit, if he wanted to do other things in life. So Zach Grinke, a one-of-a-kind character, he honestly didn't really even like playing for the Astros. He does not enjoy the city of Houston. So the Royals in the span of a couple hours, they pick up Amir Garrett by getting rid of Mike Miner, and then they add Zach Greinke, which at $13 million is extremely rich, and I have no idea why the Royals decided to do this. This was just as confusing as Chris Bryant getting $180 million from the Rockies. Now, don't get me wrong. Greinke is probably a future Hall of Famer, and he's worth anywhere from 5 to $8 million, but $13 million after not being that great over the last two seasons, I don't know about that one. Moving on over to Jack Peterson. He is going back to the West Coast. He is going back to L... Well, he's going to the LA rivals, the Giants. The San Francisco Giants have acquired Carlos Rodon and Jock Peterson over the last week, and they are trying to compete with LA because LA has lost Max Scherzer and Corey Seager. So they want to compete on a level playing field yet again. And with their young prospects of Joey Bart and Marco Luciano and Elliot Ramos with the addition of Jock Peterson, I cannot wait to see him hitting bombs in the McCovey Cove over in right field. So can they repeat as division winners? Let me know in the comment section down below because we all know who is not going to be a division winner in the NL West. The Colorado Rockies. And th this is where the rest of the video is going to really just veer in different rabbit holes. What are the Rockies doing? And what is Chris Bryant doing? My thought process is Chris Bryant has a rookie of the year, an MVP, and a chip. He has nothing else to pursue aside from statistics. And maybe he understands that he's been injured and with the shortened season in 2020, that he needs to accrue as many stats as physically possible. So going to the Rockies on a seven year deal worth $180 million, he is trying to buy back time essentially. He's doing what LeBron is doing on the Lakers right now. I'm not saying that LeBron is stat padding, but he's accruing stats so he can pass Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and bolster his case to become the GOAT. And I feel like Chris Bryant is making his case for the Hall of Fame with this deal because he's 30 years old. That is not a young bean anymore. He has a 113 OPS plus over his last 180-ish games. So he needs all of the help that he can get. Chris Bryant, I love the guy. He's a 702 boy. I would have loved to see him on the Phillies, but he is one of the most inconsistent elite hitters in baseball. Christian Yelich and Chris Bryant, they blow my mind because there are stretches of baseball where they are the best hitter in the entire league, and then all of a sudden they fall off a cliff and they're just very average. It doesn't make sense to me. And speaking of not making sense, what are the Rockies doing? Can someone please explain to me what their organizational development system is or just their plan that's in place? Because they could have gotten Trevor Story for about the same price. If you do the math, Chris Bryant is getting about $26 million. Trevor Story is going to get about that on the market, maybe $30 million. 
and they didn't trade Trevor Story, so they're going to lose him for nothing. They could have gotten a few pieces for him, or they could have just re-signed him, and I fully believe that Trevor Story is better than Chris Bryant. That might be blasphemy, but over the last three or four seasons, it's pretty evident that as an overall baseball player, Trevor Story is better, maybe not in terms of the ceiling of his offensive prowess as a hitter, but on the bases as a defender, Trevor Story is definitely better. So the fact that they're losing him for nothing, unless they come out of nowhere and re-sign him, I don't understand that and also you're paying the Cardinals 50 million dollars to take Nolan Arenado. Nolan Arenado was a superstar in Colorado, a fan favorite. He bled for that town and that city and he's only making 32 million dollars and by the end of his contract in a couple years he's making the same as Chris Bryant. So it makes you wonder what the heck is in the air in Colorado. I might know something that's in the air in Colorado. There might be some people with the good stuff I don't know what it is. I have no idea what they're doing. I, I can't even put, I'm speechless. I am speechless. When this came out a couple days ago, there was reports that Chris Bryant was going to the Rockies. It was the same as me looking at the report that the Orioles gave Carlos Correa a $300 million offer. It's 10 years. He doesn't want to play in Baltimore. That's never going to happen. And I thought the same about Chris Bryant to the Rockies. Why would he go to a dumpster fire in Colorado and not want to pursue championships and be an MVP on a playoff contender? The Rockies are not a good baseball team. Charlie Blackman is a little old. You have Brendan Rodgers, fine, he's cool and dandy, and Connor Joe was a nice story, but Chris Bryant is just going, in my opinion, he's going there because he's checked off all these boxes. Rookie of the year, check. MVP, check. Hall of Fame credentials, maybe not so much. Championship, check. So what is he missing? The Hall of Fame career in terms of just having a seven-year peak that you can compare to some of the greats in Major League Baseball or the longevity stats of four or 500 home runs and two or 3,000 hits. He's not gonna get there at this pace, so that is my only that's my only reasoning as to why this happened. Let me know in the comment section down below, what do you make of all of these trades and signings? We have Amir Garrett going to the Royals alongside Zach Grinke, who signed a $13 million deal. That is way too much. I know Zach Grinke, his name is there, but he's not the same guy that he was even a few seasons ago when he first joined the Astros. Jack Peterson, he is going back to the West Coast, and he's gonna be upsetting some Dodgers fans because he's going to the rivalry the San Francisco Giants, and again, they've signed Carlos Rodon, and they have a plethora of top prospects that could be joining the team, and the Giants, they could be making some noise again for a second straight year. And then again, we just mentioned Chris Bryant, not going to the Mariners, not going to the Phillies, going to the Colorado Rockies. And I just don't know what to make of this. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I don't expect anything from the Rockies, so I'm not even gonna say that lineup is better. It is, but it doesn't matter. See ya.